Hello, I'm Rachel Street, I'm an astronomer at LCOGT where we're building a network of telescopes around the world and I use these telescopes to discover and characterise new planets around stars other than our Sun. The way I do this is I wait for those planets to pass directly between us and their star. From our perspective it looks as though the planet crosses the face of the star. Now we don't actually see the planet because it's too far away. What we see is the light from the star becomes slightly dim for a short period of time and then it returns to normal brightness. That's called a planetary transit. What I'd like you to do with Agent Exoplanet is help me measure some of the images taken by our telescope and discover and characterize the properties of these planets. The mission brief tells you how we measure the planets and takes you through more details of how the stars dim and how that tells you more about the planet. The way in which we measure the stars is to take a sequence of images during the planet's crossing of the stellar disk. That, from these data we build up a light curve by measuring the brightness of the target star in each individual frame. I'm going to start with the planet Koro 2b. Here you can see we've got one of the first frames in our data set. Off to the top left we've got a finder chart which tells you which star in the field is the target and which we can use as comparison stars. The first thing I've got is a little tag. I'm going to place this on the target star. You'll notice it's given me another tag now. The sky is not completely black. So to measure just the light from the target star itself, we have to subtract the light from the sky. So this second aperture has to go on a background piece of the sky with no stars on it. I think that's good. Now in order to get a transit, we can't just measure the light from the star. We have to do this in a relative way by comparing the light from the target with the light from other stars in the frame, which we assume to be constant stars. So I'm going to pick this calibration 1 tag and I'm going to place this on a relatively bright star nearby the target in the field of view. Let's see. I'm going to choose this star. Now we really want as many calibration stars as possible. Any one of them could be variable and we want to choose which ones we use later on. So I'm going to try one or two more. Uh, let's choose this one. Okay, so now we've got our cal calibration stars. Let's click Analyze Image and the computer will measure the brightness of all of those objects. You can see it's presented me with a series of graphs. These are cross sections through each of the star's images in two different directions. This tells me whether or not there's a single star in that aperture and it also tells me whether I've lined up the, my crosshairs with the centre of the object. That's very critical for a good measurement, so let me check. That one looks okay, that one looks good, that one looks good. This one I think is a little bit offset, I'm going to recenter it. And let's analyze image again. Okay, that looks much better. We can now go on to the next image in the data sequence. This image will look almost exactly the same. Because it's taken sequentially from the first, it's slightly separated in time from the original image. This means that it might be slightly offset, the positions of the stars won't be quite the same. So we need to recheck our centering. So it looks like the target's slightly offset. Let me move it. And I'll do the same with the other comparison stars.
Okay, click Analyze Image again. Once you're happy with your measurements, you can keep clicking through all of the images in the data sequence. So now we've measured all of our frames, we can compile the data into a light curve. But first of all, we need to look at the light curves for each of our stars and decide whether or not it's a good calibrator. So we're going to classify those light curves. We don't know whether or not the stars in the rest of the field of view are going to be variable themselves or not ahead of time. So we find this out from our analysis. This one looks to me like it's variable in its own right, so we don't want to use it. So looking at this light curve, we can clearly see a dip, which is the transit signal. This one looks like it's a good star to use. So I'm going to click on dip. and move on to the next one. And once again we see another dip, so this is another good star to use. So, having classified all our calibration stars, we can finally move on to the compiled light curve. And there we see our planetary transit. You can see the star starts off more or less constant, and then f drops as the planet goes across the face of the star. And then, once the planet moves away, it goes back to its normal brightness. Now we can use this graph to tell us more about the planet. By clicking on this and dragging it over the duration of the transit, we can measure the amplitude. This tells us about the size, the physical size of the planet relative to the physical size of its host star. This graphic at the bottom shows you that. This is a relatively big planet and relatively close in to its host star, much closer in than any of the planets in our solar system. The agent allows you to compare your data with those of other people, and the more you measure, the more precise the measurement becomes.